Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Newsgram. What do you know about money laundering? I just read some startling statistics from an article at Zipia.com. They said that worldwide, there are between $800 billion and $2 trillion laundered annually. And the United States makes up about $300 billion of that figure. And most of the cases go undetected. Have you seen Ozark with Jason Bateman? It's a great example of the evils of money laundering. But Marty Bird and his family are a work of fiction. Dawn Pretorius has seen it all firsthand. She's been working in the financial services industry for a long, long time, and she's seen a lot of legislation over the years and other efforts worldwide to stop money laundering. But nothing seems to work. I mean, how bad is the problem? Here's a stat for you. Money laundering schemes cost 2 to 5% of the world's total GDP. That's the world's gross domestic product, just to be clear. That's a lot. And she says if we really want to stop it, we need to think differently because right now we're on the wrong path. There are things that are legal, things like company structures, shell companies, which can be used um, legally, offshore tax havens, company structures, which are very convoluted and you don't know who the ultimate beneficial owners are and that kind of thing. We have legal structures that is facilitating money laundering. And we have very good accountants and um, auditors and lawyers and advocates, all of these people who obviously apply their expertise to this. These are also complex subjects. And um, of course, only the wealthy people can afford to hide their money to, to do that kind of thing. Very complicated indeed, because like she said, most of the tools used to launder money are legal, and the people doing it are very smart and they're very good at what they do. So what can be done? We should know this is what's happening, and should we should be able to uh, change laws or change things in order to do that. It starts by getting the word out. In an effort to let people know the seriousness of the problem and that it even exists, she's written a book. And it's called The Shepherds of Inequality and the Futility of Our Efforts to Stop Them. In the book, she writes, money laundering is the world's biggest industry because it encapsulates trade, commerce, finance, business, manufacturing, production, and politics, and pervades the world's economic efforts in all these areas. To fight it, a costly counter industry has grown exponentially, but its efforts relative to the value of the money being laundered are estimated to be less than 1% effective, in terms of successful convictions, that is, and or money retrieved. If you look at the governments, they are, have a lot of powerful people in government, and many governments around the world are very corrupt. Um, so it only exacerbates the problem, unfortunately. South Africa would be a wonderful example of that. <laughs> Her job was to try and prevent money laundering from happening. That's what compliance officers and risk managers do. And she says anti-money laundering is an industry unto itself. The other industry is the one that's trying to control it. And we are actually losing the battle. I mean, we do have some incredible wins where some drug dealers are, you know, finally captured, etc. But generally, there's huge amounts of, of, of um, fraud uh, leading to Uh, money being uh, sort of lost, if you like. Her book makes for some interesting reading because this is not an easy thing to write about. It's a complicated web of corruption. Plus, once you discover a way money is being laundered, it changes. Some of the examples are very difficult to even summarize. It's a lot of collusion, collaboration amongst people. It's not just one person doing it. It's a whole sort of group um, that is is busy on, on one aspect of it, if you know what I mean, one aspect of corruption. She chose about 60 months of news from 2017 to 2022 from around 50 different randomly chosen countries to highlight the way money has been laundered there. And I'll tell you, some of the things she found are pretty mind-blowing. Money laundering goes hand in hand with drugs and trafficking. But when you hear the word trafficking, what do you think? 
the interesting thing about trafficking, um, you know, trafficking is also money laundering eventually because they get the money through corruption. But everything gets trafficked, including sand on beaches. Would you have known that? and human beings, cybercrime criminals is becoming a big thing now where people being trafficked so that they have to go and uh, work and then cause um, cybercrime on their computers. And if they don't do what they're told, they get beaten, beaten up. It's an extremely sad world when you look at that. And of course, um, I'm sure you experience it too, is scamming. People get scammed into all sorts of things, silly things like um, oh, the post office has a parcel for you. Just pay so much and, you know, go and collect your parcel. And it's, I feel sorry for people in the future because it's really difficult to know what's real and what isn't. Sand is a more valuable resource than you might think until you actually put some thought to it. And you think about all the different things sand is used for, including electronics. And sand theft is a real threat to the environment. Dawn has seen a lot of things, and her book is full of stories and information worth knowing. I applaud her and all the other people out there working to keep us safe, especially when the whole thing can seem, well, utterly hopeless sometimes. Sadly enough, big banks themselves are guilty not just of breaching maybe some of the uh, the rules for um, anti-money laundering, but they actually have been guilty of money laundering itself. You're not easily winning the game. <laughs> yeah, I've never been a big fan of banks, and so when she said that, I looked it up. According to an article from the Department of Justice dated December 13th, 2022, Dansk Bank, a global financial institution headquartered in Denmark, pleaded guilty and agreed to forfeit $2 billion to resolve the United States investigation into Dansk Bank's fraud on U.S. banks. And there are a lot more. Just Google big banks guilty of money laundering and you'll get all kinds of cases. Investigations into money laundering can take years, but there are convictions happening. They're just few and far between. Sadly, many cases don't result in satisfactory convictions, and some just fall off the radar, or politics get in the way. So what can we do? Well, you've heard me say this before, question everything. Why was Amazon's federal tax bill zero two years in a row? There are things in her book that will enrage you for sure, and they will entertain you as well. And in the end, there are some things that we can do, but it starts by keeping our eyes open and by asking questions. When we are partners or corresponding banks, we do what we call know your client on each other. So I need to know I'm dealing with that person. They need to know who they're dealing with from this side. So we have to fill in a questionnaire and the questionnaire is long and it asks you all sorts of things like how many people do you employ in compliance? How many people do you train? Have you trained your people? Which is tied up with the law. But why do they want to know from Pakistan into South Africa, for example, why we are doing this? What, what is it? It's just a ticker box. What will it do? So I'm saying, why do we have to fill in these when we need simply just give them who we are regulated by? Because they're all regulated, whether they're regulated in, by another reserve bank or a federal bank or here, etc. But the, when I did the research, I found out, guess who made up this questionnaire? It's a questionnaire made up by five of the most uh, uh, biggest banks in the world who have been guilty of money laundering. <laughs> so these are things that are ticker box stuff. It takes all our resources away from proper investigation and it's a waste of time. That's what I want to get rid of and looking at income tax and how to simplify it, etc. When you find a questionnaire that seems overly convoluted and pointless, just ask, why is this so? You might get an enlightening answer. The book is called The Shadows of Inequality and the Futility of Our Efforts to Stop Them by Don Pretorius. It's available right now at all the places where you like to shop for books online, including Barnes & Noble, and I think you'll enjoy it. We put some links to different places where you can shop for the book online in the show's description. And that will do it for this edition of Newsgram from webtalkradio.com. <laughs>